have it at other tables. Yeah. Wow. Oh, you have a technique? Yeah, so. Yeah. All right, so what you have to do is you take these off on the side. Okay. Take your chopstick and you make an X. Wow. See this? Okay. Let it hang. You let it hang. And what you're supposed to do is take the vinegar and then pour it onto... Do you guys see this? This is amazing. Should we do it together? Cheers, bud. Cheers. Wow. Pigeon for the best thing yet. All right. Let's go. This is SJ. SJ works at Arirang Radio as the host of Korea Now. He also freelances as an MLB baseball scout in Korea. And he happens to be one of my longest YouTube subscribers. Now I meet SJ every month as a recurring guest on his program. And he also happens to be crazy about Naengmyeon. With family roots tied to the Hamhung region of Korea, he seems to have more knowledge about this dish than anyone I've ever talked to. So when he told me he was coming for a visit in Daejeon, I knew just the place I had to show him. Sukkuwan Naengmyeon is a historical fourth generation Daejeon machip serving Pyongyang style Naengmyeon. Here, they're known for their pheasant and chicken Naengmyeon broth instead of beef. According to SJ, the North Korean refugees that settled around Daejeon brought this authentic recipe with them. Anyway, you have to know that this is a beloved machip that I visit regularly. And I couldn't wait to introduce these incredible noodles to my friend, the Naengmyeon devotee, SJ. Yo, what up? What's up Yo, man? what up? <laughs> Yo, what up? I watched your video. <laughs> Yo, what up? I'm so excited for this. You know, it crazy. smells so good. So apparently, it's supposed to be opening starting from 11. Oh, okay. And there are already oh, plays packed. Like That's the, insane. The entire soccer team just came. <laughs> Today, I am here with my good friend SJ. SJ came all the way from Seoul with his family last night for Ningya. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Literally for Ningya. Not for me. Not to hang out with me, but no. for Ningya. Two, it was like a three hour drive with the kid just so I could try this place. And That's I heard right. so many great things about it. Like, I'm a big fan of Pyongyang yeah. Ningya, right? And so, weirdly enough, there's so many like famous Pyongyang Ningya places in Seoul, yeah. but I heard so much about this Hejeon place specifically. Oh, this is my favorite Ningya. Okay, all right. So, as you guys can tell, he has this beautiful chocolatey rich voice <laughs> all right so i want to just introduce sj is uh the radio host of korea now right which um i appear on a couple uh once a month once a month yeah so we became friends ari rong radio yeah korea now ari rong radio yeah i mean i knew austin from like way before yeah right? yeah like, well, we're old friends. Friends. we had recently like a, a long yeah. special on our radio show right yeah and uh, 
I don't think I've ever been so excited talking about a certain food. I know, right? And I, I felt bad because I felt like I was taking over that segment. It was like Austin. It was awesome. Is the highlight. But I'm going. Wait, 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 shh, Austin, shh, hold on. Let me explain to you. I've had, you know, I have grandparents who are from North Korea. You know, they told me a lot about naengmyeon. Uh, although they're more into like the hamon naengmyeon. Mm. And uh, I know you're a kodari naengmyeon. You've had that. Yeah, recently. yeah, I love kodari. Uh, that was actually my grandparents' favorite food. Ooh. Of all time because they're from that area, the coastal uh, area. Pyongyang Ning is something that you can't have even in New York. Yeah. Right? Uh, even in Seoul, it's hard to get. You have to order extra extra <laughs> kimchi at Sukhuwan Ning, and their kimchi is the bomb. I'm nervous because I always hype up these restaurants and then I get nervous. I'm like, is it really that good? I don't know. Wow. Isn't that great kimchi? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna get, I'm I missing your it. reaction. Oh, it's so sour. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I love this. Oh my goodness. It's almost like bubunji. Yes. Yeah. Wow. I don't know what they do. It's magical kimchi, though. Wow. <laughs> but before we tuck into this mandu, I want to say last night I discovered a video on YouTube and I clicked on it. And this Korean-American guy had a U.S. passport around his neck, like bling, with these glasses. Right. Honestly, this is, don't, I, I hope this is okay to say, you look a lot like Psy with those glasses. You know what? I've gotten a lot of that. I actually thought it was Psy. I got a lot of that. You know, you know what's funny is, if I have, it is a compliment by the way. If I have the sunglasses on, it's Psy. Yeah. If I have my glasses on, since we are eating Pyongyang Ningmyeon, yes. I get a lot of uh, Kim Jong-un. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to edit that out. Demonetization. <laughs> Sensitive topic. So it turns out that SJ started an English learning YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, the first video is out now. What? Do you want to introduce it? Yeah, so we start eating? Uh, it's for our Korean viewers. And uh, I noticed that there's so many like English uh, channels out there teaching English, right? But they're all like textbook English. So my channel is called Survival English, and it's basically how do you survive in places like New York, right? Using all the terms that the New Yorkers use, and it's not the typical "Hi, hellos, how are you doing?" kind of a thing. Uh, but like real you know, like New Yorker uh, native, what New Yorkers would use and things like that. So it's a bit goofy. Um, <laughs> it was fun. That makes fun, it fun. Though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's the whole point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't want a boring channel yeah. or anything like that. Hey, definitely check it out because when I clicked on it, it sounded so natural. It felt like I was walking the streets of New York. Just here, like, how you doing, sir? How, how you, you doing? doing sir? How you doing? <laughs> like, even the formality. Yeah. yeah. How you Forget doing? about sir? it. Yeah. The mandu dough is so thin. It's like yeah. paper thin. Please hit it with a little of this kimchi. I love the kimchi and the mandu together. There's a good amount of pepper too, I love it. Yeah. It's got really nice flavor. From what I understand, a lot of uh, Pyongyang refugees, right after the Korean War, settled in this area which was called Sukuwan. And actually they make charcoal okay. in this area. That's why, that's why it's called. Yeah, yeah. So there's actually a few descendants of that that make Pyongyang Nengyeon here. There's a couple good restaurants. has such a strong memorable taste of the noodles. It's like not bland. It's up and down. When we had our Nengyang conversation on yeah. your show, you were telling me there's some secret way of eating Pyongyang Nengyang. There's a proper way, right? Okay. So, so you gotta teach me this. So the thing with uh, Pyongyang Nengyang is it, for some people it could taste bland, right? Yes. So even before you get into it, you have to get into the soup first, yeah. right? The broth. All right. So they, take, so they say take three spoons, right? So you get three, okay. Oh man, mm. I don't even think it requires three spoons. Wow, it doesn't even okay. require so three. one. Now I can taste the peppery side. Yeah, definitely. Wow, okay. 
So the reason why they say it takes three sips is because when you eat it right off the bat, it tastes very bland. And then it, you want your taste buds to get used to just the broth in itself. Got it. What you have to do is you take these off on the side, okay. take your chopstick, and you make an X. Wow. See this? Okay. You let it hang. You let it hang. And what you're supposed to do is take the vinegar and then pour it onto... Do you guys see this? This is amazing. Because, so the meat meat is a lot softer than the kind of, uh, the noodles that you use for hummingin. Yeah, right? sure. And so it actually soaks up the vinegar and it doesn't ruin the broth. Okay. And, so, and then what also the vinegar does for the noodle is make it, it makes it chewier. So what do you do with someone like me who has uh, myun sari? Right? <laughs> I have to do it twice, right? Okay, I'm gonna try to make the X. Twice. Okay. All right, all right, I got it. You got one. I gotta do one at a time, maybe. Or get two extra chopsticks. I could ask for extra chopsticks. Pour it over, right? Yeah, just a little bit. This is amazing. This is revolutionary, man. I'm gonna do this every time I have ninja. Then mix it up. Then mix it up. Let me get wow. it back up here. And we'll take a bite. All right. <clears throat> Should we do it together? Cheers, bud. Cheers. Wow. Tejon for the best thing yet. All right. Me. Let's go. Mm. Oh my god. I love it. Wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> What do you think? You know the broth, it's not as subtle as some of the other Pyongyang mm. is. It's very peppery for some yeah. reason. And I love that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And the, the noodles, again, much softer because it's maybe right? Yeah. Holy cow. This is good. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> no, this is really good. Mmm. So how about you? Mustard, no mustard? What's your what's your take? So for the second half, I'm gonna try the mustard. Got it. Yeah. You want it just on its own. Right. You know, I actually use a lot, probably because I'm a foreigner and like I love <laughs> I love horseradish taste. Yeah, yeah. Like I love that bite, and it mixes so well with the broth. Shiwanhara, as they say, wow. right? Mmm. This is the best thing to eat in the summertime. Yeah. It feels like air conditioning. You know, the crazy thing is, Ning Nyan used to be a winter food. Mm. They would make the Tong Chi Mi, mm. right? Interesting. And they would ferment it underground during the winter time. Wow. And then they would take it out. And then because there's no freezers or anything like that, fridges back in the days, they would take that ice cold Tong Chi Mi and then make uh, Ning Nyan. So it was actually a winter food rather than a summer food. I had no place. idea. Yeah. It does that. That this makes awesome. sense. Yeah. Now you just always like, associate with summer. I feel mm -hmm. like it's cool and refreshing. All right, my second half. Hmm. I'm, I'm gonna say something crazy now, but how do you feel about myun sari? Because if we order myun sari, we get two portions. Would you eat one more in your bowl? I would do it. Because I want more. <laughs> you already ordered two portions. I know, I will eat three portions today. I don't care. All right, this is gonna be the best bite with all the plum peasants. Mm. There's actually a lot of meat in this too. Sazeknim, myun sari Yep. There's something about filling your mouth with these noodles, like 100%. It 
it just, I can't, I'm addicted to it. I'm addicted to this place. I come oh. here at least twice a month, like, this that's is it? <laughs> I know, that's it. Look at this. Pure, memu, like you can see the memu. These noodles are amazing. Wow, and you get more yuksu. Yeah. That For Ochan one, you basically get another bowl. How can you go wrong here? I'm curious if there's a big difference for you between the kwong and the chicken. Because you chose the chicken over I there. usually get the chicken, even though I understand the kwong is the oh, special. Oh, I see why you got the chicken. <laughs> I see. <laughs> oh, this is more. It's got more shik choy. Oh, I see. oh, that's good. Oh man, yeah. It's funny because if you get the guang ningyan, it comes in a beautiful bronze bowl. Yeah. But if you get the chicken one, it's like not the. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is the peasants, peasants For version. Every day, yeah, every the day. farmers version. Mmm, <laughs> man. I love it so much. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. The kimchi, man. Yeah, it's, oh it's my God. amazing. Chincha machi soyo. Oh, so this must be like the North Korean way to make kimchi. Because mm. I kept on going. The reason why this taste is so like familiar is because that's how my grandmother ah, made it. That's mm. awesome. So once it ferments, it has that's that. That's amazing. You know, what kind of? Uh, she might have used like fermented anchovy oh. sauce. I think might be what it is. Okay. Spent a lot of time in his house. I don't know. You know, when we moved to New York, I had no idea we were gonna come live in Korea, so. We were up in Washington Heights, which was Dominican. I miss Dominican food. <laughs> mm, one of my closest buddies was Dominican. Nice. So, you know, that was the good thing about living in New York. Yeah. Right? It's like you have so much diversity. So much. So like Mondays I'll go over to my friend Carlos's house, Dominican guy, <laughs> have his food. And That's then awesome. um, you know Wednesdays I'll go to a friend of mine who uh, Middle Eastern family have their food. Mm. And then Friday comes, you know, great fried chicken. Uh, this one family used to make. Wow. Used to go there all the time. So you get so much like diversity of food. And I think you made a good point. For some reason, like food is good because even as I'm eating this, I'm reminiscing about some of the other foods I, you know, ate when I was growing up. You know, I reminisce about family. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Check out SJ's channel, new new English learning channel. So, how? Let's give us a tiny little lesson. How would you say goodbye to? People in <laughs> so you know, it would be like no goodbye, right? You wouldn't just say goodbye. All right. But I usually use later. All right, there we go. All right, later. Later. Later, everybody. Peace.